Hi, I'm Pimble Jeff, and this is the first of a series of videos about pinball machines. Hi, I'm Pinball Jeff, an avid and obsessive collector of pinball machines. And in this series, I very much hope to share with you my absolute joy at the existence of these machines and how they work and a bit about their history and why they're so amazing. It's very odd, when I first played pinball, I was just mesmerised by the game. I just thought, because I just thought it was so exciting and so bizarre, and this random nature of the forces of nature and these wonderful, bizarre mechanics, which I didn't understand. And when I started taking them apart and seeing how they worked, it was odd, because it was like seeing someone's innards. Then you put them back together and then a human being again. You go, this is a wonderful person, even though I know how some of it works. There's a magic to the whole thing, which is different from how they work. Very interesting, because I suppose each every decade it can be a golden age in some ways. I think you've got the 1930s where pinball pre-flipper were like bag of tail and became very lovely things and were with a bit of a gambling side to it, people would give out prizes and money. The flippers came in the late 40s with the Gottlieb Humpty Dumpty. This 1947 Gottlieb game, Humpty Dumpty, the player also saw something that he had never seen before. It was called the flipper and pinball was never going to be the same. You might guess that the first flipper game would have a pair of flippers, but Humpty Dumpty had six. And then they went on from there. I think the 50s and 60s are a wonderful period when pinball, if you, th if you say to someone, pinball machine, I mean, for me, I think of something like this. This is archetypal pinball. Flipper Parade, a classic 1960s Gottlieb machine. I acquired this lovely machine only very recently actually, sadly from a terminally ill gentleman in Hastings who is a delightful and wanted it to go to a good home. So I feel very fortuitous and therefore aside from it being a fantastic and lovely machine it's already very precious to me because of the way it came to me and I think that's one of the things with something that's worth something. I don't really think about the monetary value of these machines. And it's what they mean to me and I think this is just a lovely beautiful object actually. Flipper Parade is interesting because it shows during the 60s this lovely sort of charmingly naive almost childlike art which is um, very different from the sort of modern views of pinball as slightly, slightly sort of racy and sort of gambling and all this is kind of family entertainment really. Also, what was really special about this game is what they call an addable game. Because of the gaming laws in America at the time, pinball machines were seen as gambling machines. And if you won a free game, that was a, a thing of worth, therefore worth money. And therefore, they introduced this system. You started off with five balls a game. As you got your features up and showed your skill, you could gain extra balls, but you couldn't get another game. And that got around all the gaming acts at the time. This had been made in Chicago, 1960s America. I suppose early beatniks, it was pre-hippie, wasn't it? What was lovely, again, the majorette, such an icon of American culture. Um, and so it's a, I, can I can just imagine some coffee bar with people with slightly long hair down to there smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee and playing this fabulous machine. It must have been great. Gottlieb, like many of the companies, all started in the 30s, 20s and 30s really. And uh, I know, you know, all of them have this little logo, the Gottlieb Flipper Skill Game. And that was to say, this is a game of skill, it's not just a game of charts and it's not a gambling machine. This is to show your prowess at pinball. What? What's interesting about pinball machines in the 60s, they were deceptively simple looking games, but with that beautifully worked out. So a simple game became something of great complexity and joy to actually play. And for instance, on this game, you just lights the numbers, gives the ability on this beautiful spinning target to get extra balls. The bumpers are quite hard to light and it's just, everything is just beautifully arranged. So you think, oh, there's not much to it. And when you're playing it, you don't think this is a simple game because there's always something to go for. And the great thing about an addable game is just as you're about to lose a game, it's going to be game over, you just get that feature and you get an extra life, as it were. So it's a very beautiful thing, especially for home play. I can see this machine, for me, I can see it by a lovely old fashioned seaside resort, but I personally would like to play it next to a horse guards parade in the Mall, maybe wearing a nice soldier's hat while I did so. Yeah. I have actually done a naked pinball sale once in my old shop. I was 
living there. Yeah, and sale. Someone, what happened was, I was changing. I thought I'd locked the door, and I hadn't, and someone just walked in, a family just walked in. I literally was wearing a shirt, no trousers, oh, underpants or anything, nothing. And of course they went like this, and they came in. Once I started talking to them, I could say, by the way, I'm naked. Do you know what I mean? So they went on, and they said, can you show us some machines? I said, well, please help yourself. It was literally like this, and the whole time I'm strategically moving around. Do you know what I mean? My underpants and things, everything. There. Anyway, they ended up buying a machine, putting a deposit down, and they left. And no one knew, obviously. No. <laughs> I like the historical element because it's interesting. When I want just a game of pinball, or play something like this, a nice old game. I love the new games as well, but my heart is probably in the historical and the way they've changed over the years. And one of my dreams is really to have all these machines out so that people can see them. I've got hundreds of machines all stored and I'd love to see them all living together somewhere. That'd be amazing and I've always wanted to do a show about pinball machines and now I am. This is very, very exciting. Lots of these machines to look at, a lot to talk about in the series. I look forward to seeing you.